When you work with a 3D camera tracker and you attach something to the scene, and that thing is not flush up against something like a building or a wall or something, where it's actually pulled away from the surface, you want to have a shadow falling away from that object to give it a greater sense of realism and have that shadow fall on the surface behind it. To do that, you use something called a shadow catcher. And I'm going to show you how to apply a shadow catcher in this lesson. So go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and go down to 2003 Shadow Catcher. Now for this lesson, we're going to work only with the vineyard, not with the building, because the building, we had the stained glass windows flush up against the sides of the buildings. There'd be no shadows there at all. But here we've got this text kind of hovering out in space. We want to try to connect them a little bit more to the vines, and we can do that with shadows. So we're going to add a shadow catcher behind the text. So we'll start off here with Pino. We need to click on the vineyard to bring that up and then open up the effect controls panel. You'll see the 3D camera tracker, so you click on that again. We want to find another target here back there that kind of matches the target that sort of matches the general shape and direction of the words. It doesn't have to exactly match it because you can change that later. But let's increase the point size a bit there and increase the target size quite a bit. And now we're talking, let's find something that looks like that guy right there. It's pretty close. I'm going to click on that to get those three points selected. Now right click and you'll see that you can create a shadow catcher. If we didn't have a light already, it would also create a light. But since we've got a light already, it just creates a shadow catcher. And now the shadow catcher is there. Hard to see, though. I'm going to click away from the camera tracker to get rid of all those little targets, those little points. There's a shadow catcher down there. You can see the text kind of showing up there in the vine, but not so clearly. And that's one of the little problems with the shadow catcher, is that it's not that easy to work with in its native state. But in fact, the shadow catcher is something that people have been setting up manually in previous versions of After Effects, and now it's automated. The shadow catcher is just a solid layer that in the past people used blending modes to have it work with shadows. But the new thing with CS6 is that you can have some object receive shadows and show only the shadows. That's such a slick thing in CS6. So let's take a look at the shadow catcher's material options. Press AA to open up the material options. And there's accept shadows only. In other words, you see only the shadows. You don't see the solid layer. But let's take a look at the solid layer. Then it'll be much easier to work with it. So click off that and say on. And now there is the solid layer right up against the words. And you can sort of see that right there. You see the I and the N. Okay, now we can get a sense of where it is and how it relates to the text and how it relates to the light, which is off in the distance someplace, pretty far away, in fact. So let's adjust this solid layer so that it covers the entire text. So just click on it, make it active, and we'll go get our selection tool and start dragging it out a little bit more. Pull it to the right like that. There we go. And there's Pino. That looks much better now. Pull this thing up a little bit like so. I'm thinking that I need to rotate it a little bit. See how it goes up against the T there? Let's rotate it a bit. So I'm going to go down to Shadow Catcher, press R for rotation. I'm going to rotate, let's say, the Y axis there. So I'm going to go over here and rotate on that little axis there. Now it's beginning to look a little better, also getting a little bit more distinct. Maybe move it back a bit, take the z-axis and pull it back somewhat, away like that. If we do that, we need to obviously fix the x-axis here in a second, but that's fine. Pull that along like so. That's working for me. And pull it down a little bit like that. Okay, now our little shadow catcher is doing its job. I'm going to turn it back to the condition where it's just a shadow only. So click on this. Go AA and turn on Accepts Shadows Only. Now you can see the shadow down there. If we want to adjust the intensity of the shadow, we go to the light to do that. The light's down right there. Click AA to open up its 3D options. Go down here a little ways. You got intensity. That's how bright it is. But we got the shadow darkness, let's say darker, so you can see it better. There we go. You can see it pretty well. If we change the diffusion, we can make it a little bit diffuse around the edges. Now it's too dark, of course. There you go, something like that. Now we can see it better up against the vines. Maybe not quite that diffuse. There you go, maybe not so dark. Okay, so there we go, we've done our job. Let's see how that works. That's sticking on there. Let's go over to Cabernet and try that one, different angle here. So again, we go back down here to the clip, go to the 3D camera tracker, and maybe pull down the size of these markers. Now we don't need to be so large because they're closer to the camera here. Hover around here to find a target that more or less matches the shape of the Cabernet. I'll take that one. It's not exactly what I want, but for this lesson, we'll just accept that one. Right click, go create shadow catcher. You can see the text showing up there. Click away so you don't have to have all that stuff showing up. Same as before, we've got two shadow catchers, both named shadow catcher one. 
So I'm going to change the name for this guy. I go over here and change it to something else, like we'll call this cab catcher. So I can see it later if I want to track it down. And we'll close down the other shadow catcher. Go here for material options, AA. And we will accept shadows on. And there it is. Kind of got a little twist there. We'll take the rotation, R for rotation. Let's say it will twist it on the Z axis here a little bit. There we go. Looks like we need to tip it back just a little bit. Rotate it on the X axis. Change the scale. Pull this guy out like so. Maybe slide it along a little bit. Go to the X. Let's see if that's actually Y, but that's because we twisted it around. And I think maybe we need to rotate it just a little bit more on the X axis just to kind of get it to line up a little bit. Pull it back a little bit. There we go. So now we have added that one. We can adjust it if we want to. We can put, let's say, the anchor point at the end here and get it up close to the C if we want to kind of angle it away from Cabernet. But for our purposes, I think that works pretty well. So go back to the 3D options, AA, and we will let it accept only shadows. And now those guys are right down there, just barely visible, but you don't want it to be too prominent. They are shadows after all. They're not supposed to be so visible. They follow things pretty well. There's the text down there in the vineyard along with the Pinot text there also showing up down there. So that's how you add a shadow catcher and adjust its position.